New tractor owners, listen up. I made a recent video about all the hidden costs for tractor owners, and it's true. There are a lot of hidden costs. However, for the very basics, just the bare essentials that you need, that list is pretty short. You don't have to spend thousands of extra dollars just to get started. So when someone starts chatting me up about what they need for their new tractor, what they gotta get along with it to be kind of set up right, well, most of those answers are gonna be custom tailored to fit their application. However, there are a handful of things required for every tractor owner, regardless of your task. Let's play a fun game really quick in this one too. Something is going to change in the background of this video between the beginning and the end of it. If you figure out what it is, leave a comment down below. Fair warning, this is just my opinion. All you seasoned vets out there, if you have something else you think every tractor owner should have, let us know what that is by leaving a comment down below. You know what, it would really help me out if you would give me a thumbs up, and if you want to see more helpful tractor videos, hit that subscribe button right down below. If you're in the market for some cool tractors or tractor attachments, read through that description right underneath the video, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. So it's no secret, I sell used equipment, so I am pretty particular about what I bring in, not only in the condition of the equipment, but what features are found on the tractors that I have for sale. For that reason, it's gonna be very rare to see something out here that doesn't have a quick attach bucket, a quick attach loader, you know, a quick attach mower, a quick attach backhoe, a three-point quick attach, the common theme there is quick attach. I want that versatility for my customers. I think that paying a little bit more to have equipment that has that kind of a feature on there to allow you to make um, or to hook up different attachments to the loader or take the loader off quickly if you just wanna mow or take the backhoe off or hook up to different three-point attachments a lot easier. Those kinds of features are worth their weight in gold. So quick attach is really pretty self-explanatory, right? But the main benefits are gonna be efficiency and versatility. So efficiency, because it's gonna be very fast, of course, to change attachments out, like take your bucket off, put pallet forks on, or a snow pusher, or if you wanna take your whole loader off, or your mower deck, or your backhoe. Versatility, again, because you can take your bucket off then, you can put those forks on, you can put the snow pusher on, a grapple, instead of being just stuck with your bucket and no quick way to go back and forth between forks and a pusher or anything else. And of course, it's gonna allow you to do things the right way. If you're mowing your lawn, you really shouldn't have your loader on and your bucket on. So if you can quickly take this off, it's gonna keep a lot of stress and strain off of the front axle of the tractor. It's gonna allow you to maneuver in tighter corners. And the same thing if you're trying to use your front end loader or your three point. You wanna be able to take your mower deck off because this is an easy thing to damage if you're driving along, say you're tilling and, or you're in your woods just driving around and you hit a stump and it whacks the mower deck and knocks it out of alignment. You could have some costly repairs that way as well or shorten uh, the lifespan of the axle, for example, in other scenarios. So the easier it is to take on and off, the better off you are. This next essential for tractor owners is free for everybody, but it's something that we all need and rely on. We're using it right now. And that's gonna be support. And that's a great thing in this day and age is you have so many versions and forms and ways to get knowledge about your tractor. And that learning curve is really gonna get shortened the more that you kind of dive into it and understand what's going on with your tractor, how to use it, watching it in action. You can do that in a lot of different ways. YouTube, of course, is a really good platform not my channel. There's a lot of great channels out there that show tractors in action, all sorts of different setups, different configurations. You can see what works and what doesn't work, the right size equipment to fit your machine. Same thing with Facebook groups. There's a lot of cool mods that go on there with uh, guys that are doing different custom things to their tractors. If you want to see how to get different lighting on there or just different ways to kind of outfit it and customize your tractor to fit your needs. Along the lines of YouTube and the Facebook groups, forums are gonna be a fantastic place for all sorts of tractor owners, those with a lot of experience, those just starting out and everywhere in between, to just get together, ask and answer those questions, and it's not only gonna take care of the situation at hand for that, that um, customer or that user right at that point, but that information is there for everybody else in the future to read and digest and understand and hopefully shorten their learning curve as well. In fact, I think tractor forums are so beneficial that on my new website that's coming out soon, you'll wanna stick around for that, goodworkstractors.com. I paid thousands of dollars extra to have a forum application built into that website. That way, I can direct folks right there. We can have a great community just to get those questions answered uh, right there on the spot. Another couple great ways to get support are gonna be through your dealers. So that's why I say one of the big decisions in figuring out the right tractor for you, John Deere, Kubota, Coyote, whoever, is checking out your local dealer. Do you have good support there? You know, there's 
good dealers and bad dealers. Most of them are good out there, right? But go ahead, talk to those guys. Even if you don't buy a tractor from them, a good dealer is still gonna take care of you if you need to get your tractor service there or buy some parts or accessories from them. That can make a difference between getting a John Deere, a Kubota, or any other brand. Of course, you can always reference your user manual. If you don't have a hard copy, at least with John Deere, if you just Google John Deere 1025R manual or John Deere 300CX manual, you're gonna find this same thing just in the online version, okay? So it's the exact same thing, easy to reference, but even after all these years, I've made videos on the hidden things that I find in these manuals that maybe you just gloss over the first 10 times you read through it, but you kind of pick up on it eventually. So there's a lot of good stuff in here. I'd encourage you to read it. If you don't have a hard copy, just get it online. Something else that's not gonna cost you a whole lot, but could come in really handy, especially if you're in the middle of a project and all of a sudden need it. Something like fasteners, linchpins, cotter pins. And I'll tell you, if you use a tiller, if you use a brush hog, a snow blower, anything along those lines, shear bolts are your best friend. That's not one of those things you wanna search around for when you're out in the field and all of a sudden one of these shears off. Have some replacements on hand. They're super cheap, just keep them with you. You may never need them if you get lucky, but if you do, you're gonna be thankful you have them with you. Even items like pins for your three-point attachments or your quick hitch. You know, in fact, last fall I was doing some tilling and I had forgot I had adjusted uh, my hook up and down, forgot to tighten down one of my bolts and it actually came off in the field. So if you can keep extra hardware around with you, I didn't, <laughs> but if you do, it'll save you a lot of time. So learn from my mistakes and shorten your learning curve. You know, and out here at least, straps and chains really come in handy with trying to move things around. But if you're out in the woods as well, say you have a log somewhere that you just can't push, you gotta kind of pull it out of the way. Great way to just strap to it and yank it out of the way this way. So keeping something handy like this will really help you out when you're in a pinch. Simple maintenance items will go a long way to making your tractor last longer and making it a lot easier for you to use. If you can keep things on hand like a rust release spray, some grease options as well, they're gonna help you with attaching and detaching to your different attachments that you have. They're also gonna make it so that your loader, your mower deck, your backhoe, other things with grease circs on there, your drive shafts, are going to last a lot longer. It's very easy to do, very simple to do. You should have these kinds of products on hand. These are nothing you need to take to a dealer to have done. Even a couple simple tools like a hammer and a set of channel locks will help you when you're out in the field. If you gotta get an attachment off or maybe an attachment on and it's just being stubborn, these hunks of steel, will help you move those other hunks of steel. Now, I don't care if you have a loader on your tractor, if you don't have a loader, if you have something on the back or not, everybody needs ballast weight and stability, okay? Because you are not just using the tractor, you're gonna have something connected to it. So whether it's a mower, and maybe you're just mowing around on a side hill and you have to have some weight to help keep you planted to the ground. If you're using a front end loader, you gotta have some weight on the back. Different scenarios call for different types of ballast weight and stability. So everybody's gonna have a little bit of a different requirement of that kind of ballast weight or spacers or dual wheels. But I'll tell you, we all need stability on our tractors to get our projects done safely. So talking about reading your owner's manual, this is where that's gonna come in handy because if you're gonna use your front end loader, it's gonna tell you how much weight you need to have on the backside to offset that. You can accomplish that in a variety of ways with suitcase weights, with a ballast box, with wheel weights, with liquid ballast inside your tires, a lot of ways to go about it. The point being, you gotta get it done. Weight on the front of your tractor can be useful in a couple different scenarios. Sometimes, if you don't have your loader on and you have maybe a heavy tiller or some other piece of equipment on the back end, you wanna have some more weight up here to help keep you planted to the ground. Your loader is a good form of ballast weight, but it's not ideal for every situation. And sometimes even this additional weight up front will help keep your front end planted to the ground when you're using something on the front. So a snow pusher or a snow plow, for example, sometimes will um, almost make it like you want your front wheels to come off the ground a little bit. So if you can add an extra 200 pounds in this scenario here, well, that's like one of me just standing on the front of the tractor help keeping it planted to the ground while I'm pushing or plowing that snow. A lot of us are dealing with hills, okay? There's no way around it. You just have hilly property. You still have work to get done. That's where a setup like these dual wheels can come in handy or maybe wheel spacers to get a little bit wider footprint here. 
These tractors are not very stable side to side. You could find yourself in some dangerous situations. You need to find a way to make it safe to do that work. And so whether it's through the dual wheels, the wheel spacers, maybe a combination of one of those items along with wheel weights, liquid ballast to really lower your center of gravity, it's gonna make a big difference to operating safely and efficiently on your tractor. So while the form of ballast or stability could change depending on the user, the one thing I can tell you is we all need some version of it. So that's it guys, the bare essentials, what every tractor owner needs to know, needs to have. That's just my opinion. If you have something else you think belongs on this list, leave a comment down below. And did you figure out what changed from the beginning of the video to the end? As always, I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more cool tractor videos, hit that subscribe button right down below. And as always, read through the description as well. All sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks so much for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.